The big idea, the one message Paul really wants to get across in this section as it pertains to what the Colossians were facing and as it pertains to any circumstance in which someone may be trying to intimidate you spiritually or intellectually with some other false teaching. Here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying the cross of Jesus Christ forever set you free from the dominion of Satan. The cross is going to serve as a lens through which we will see three realities that pertains to them and to us today. Number one is this. The cross is going to reveal to us the real roots, the real twisted roots of these false teachers and false teachings, right? Verse 8, Paul says, do not let anyone kidnap you with these empty philosophies. In other versions, he says, don't let anyone capture you by these high-sounding nonsense, There's two sources from where false teachers and false teachings get their false doctrines. The first one, verse 8, Paul says it comes from what he describes as human tradition. Now, that's actually not new because many religions around the world have their basis in what Paul calls human tradition. But the second source of these false teachers and these false doctrines is a lot more sinister than its followers realize. Paul says that their roots are not only according to human tradition, but according to, here's the phrase, the elemental spirits of this world. You know what he's saying there? He's saying that their doctrine is based on demonic ideologies. The source of these false teachings is demonic, but once again, man, it sounds so good. Well-crafted. There's a line from a movie that I think is theologically perceptive. It's an old movie, and the main character, Kaiza Sose, um, says, he says, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Paul is saying, um, the Satan does exist, demons are real, and they have hidden themselves nicely in false teachings and false teachers. The apostle Paul understands the full spiritual impact of what Jesus did on on the cross and its implication for believers. And this brings us to the second uh, spiritual reality that we see through the cross of Jesus Christ. The first was the twisted roots of the teachers. The second one is really the source, the powerful source from where you as a follower of Jesus Christ have authority over spiritual power. Elsewhere in Ephesians chapter 120, Paul paints this beautiful picture where he says Jesus Christ is presently seated far above like Christ is seated far above all rule all authority and all dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but in the age to come in Ephesians 120 Christ is seated far above all of them and in light of where Christ is seated Paul says in Colossians 2 here he says that you have been filled in him him who is above all rule, all power, all authority. And so in, by virtue of your union with Christ through faith in Christ, you now share in Jesus' power and authority over all rule, all authority, all power. Are you tracking with that? The cross of Jesus Christ is a pair of lens through which we not only see the rooted teachings of the false teachers, we not only see the source of the Christian's authority over demonic forces, but lastly, man, the cross of Jesus Christ, we see exactly how Jesus disarmed Satan from his power. And that's why Jesus, Paul says Jesus put him to shame. In fact, later on in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, the apostle Peter paints this picture of what happened during those days when Jesus' body was in the tomb. Paul tells us that in those days, Jesus Christ, though his physical body was in the tomb, his living divine spirit actually went to the realm of the dead where demons were and announced to them. He made a proclamation to those imprisoned spirits, basically bragging, you lost. Like every demon on earth and in prison needed to hear this. The ones that were on earth saw it on the cross. And just so everybody got the news, Christ went to the realm of the dead to be like, you lost. 